<laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Thank we you, thank Pastor God Pastor. for every mother. We thank God for our mama. The intruders from Philly said a long time ago, I always love my mama. She's my favorite girl. You only get one. You only get one mama. Thank God. Thank God for all of you who are mothers and have those of you who have raised your children, those who are currently bringing up your children, we give God the praise and the glory and honor for you and ask God to help you to continue doing what you're doing. What would we do without mothers in this world? And there are men and women in prison right now crying out, Mama, Mama, Mama. Ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful to mothers. Thank God for my mother who passed away four years ago. What a mighty woman. What a wonderful woman. Thank God for the mother of my children. She passed 20 years ago. What a mighty woman. What a mighty mother. Praise God. We've been truly blessed. And I thank God for you, for your mama. Thank God for uh, all the wonderful things that he's done for us. So we greet you and welcome you at the online church, the church that's make, making a difference in the lives of many people. We are recording so that people all over the world can hear these messages and participate in these messages. And so we give God the glory, we give God the praise and the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have a great message today. We've got a message today entitled, What Happens When You Get Filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes, I'm still talking about the Holy Spirit. God uh, wants you to know about the Holy Spirit. So today, we're going to look at what happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. And next week, next week, we just might come back with a message we taught earlier this year, but it would be in a different uh uh, presentation how to get filled with the Holy Spirit so today we want to look at what happens when you get filled with the Holy Spirit and if you think you know uh, don't 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 uh, sign out and, and go to another ministry no stay on and, and and learn something so that you can teach somebody else and be a blessing to someone else oh what a mighty God we serve what a mighty God we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty God we serve. We're going to ask, we're going to ask uh, Ryan Trogler, Trogler in about a minute from now uh, to, re to lead us in prayer, to read us in prayer. And then we're going to ask Jackie Fisher, Jackie Fisher, if she will come and read the scripture from Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, Jackie, we're going to read about 14, 15 verses. going to read from Ephesians chapter 5 to, I'm looking at 21. But you know what, Jackie? I'd like you to at, read Ephesians chapter 5, starting with 17, and go to the end of the chapter. So in that order, ladies and gentlemen, if you have your Bibles, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5 or download Ephesians chapter 5. I want you to pray when, when Ryan Trogler leads us to the throne of grace. We are to pray with him. We're to touch heaven with him so that the Holy Spirit will bless us all. And then as Jackie reads the scripture, read, follow along with her and listen to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, Ryan, can you do this for us? Uh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, good Church. Good morning, Ryan. God bless you. And I want to say God bless you as well, and I want to say God bless all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you, and may God touch your lives in, in special ways, in, in all ways. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another awesome day today. We want to thank you for providing all of our needs. We want to thank you for our family and our friends. We want to thank you for this online ministry. And Lord, we want to we want you to come down and uh, bless Pastor Carter today with the wisdom and knowledge to teach us your awesome word today. And Lord, just bless and heal the sick today and let them see them, let them hear you, and let people come to you and show them the miracles that you can do, Lord. 
And with that, we say we love you, praise you, and honor you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan, for reading the word. Praise God. And now, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ryan, for praying. And now, we're going to ask Jackie Fisher to come in and, and, and read the word of God uh, as we prepare for our message. Well, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, Good morning, Church. Jackie. I uh, hope you're all blessed and highly favored today. As I read Ephesians 5:17 through the end, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Analogy of family and church. Wives, submit yourselves under you, unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as his, himself, and the white sea that she reverence her husband. And that's the end. Praise God. Praise God. We want to thank uh, Jackie Fisher for reading the Word of God, and she read from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 through 33. And you may have been wondering as she was reading, what's all this have to do with being filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, when we rightly divide the word of truth and don't take the Bible out of context and, and put the whole thing together, Paul is teaching here in Ephesians how to live the Holy Spirit-filled life. The Holy Spirit-filled life. He gives us evidences of the Holy Ghost baptism in the lives of people. And, and so many people, you might be getting this for the first time in your growth, your spiritual life, that your, the way you treat your wife depends on, 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 on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of people out there, they claim they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they treat their wives as though their wives are dogs. There are a lot of wives out there who claim to be filled with the Holy Spirit, <coughs> and they do not honor and respect their husbands. And then when you look into chapter 6 of Ephesians, chapter 6 begins with, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. 
honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And so we hear a lot of Christians say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. We, we even hear the Pentecostals say, I'm saved, sanctified, fire baptized, and I'm running from my life, and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, the Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. If, you, if a man say, says he's spirit-filled, I want to see how he treats his wife. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If a woman says she's spirit-filled, I want to know if, she, if she's under submission of her husband. If a child says, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, then I want to see if they obey their parents. And so uh, the Scriptures give us a whole list of things. Even servants are to serve with dignity and respect uh, to those who are masters over them. And we use the word master meaning those who have authority over them. And, and, and we even go as far as if the president says he's spirit filled, filled with the Holy Ghost, then uh, we should know the truth and the truth will make us free. If the Congress, the senators, the Speaker of the House and the politi politicians say they're filled with the Spirit of God, then we ought to see some fruits in their lives. You know, when you're spirit-filled, then you live a certain way. When you're spirit-filled, you no longer lie. When you're spirit-filled, you no longer commit adultery. When you're spirit-filled, you no longer stay in a, in a same-sex marriage relationship. If you're spirit-filled, you no longer smoke reefer or whatever you... you, you uh, put cut and cut into that cigar. If you're spirit filled, you no longer drink that drink that liquor. And we're going to look at how the scripture says, "And be not drunk with wine, which is dissipation and which is in excess." And so this fifth chapter of Ephesians is very important. We've got a lot of people who claim to be spiritual, and God wants us all to be spiritual, but God wants us all under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. He wants everyone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so there's so much fighting in the church against the Holy Spirit. That is because ignorance has prevailed for so long, for hundreds of years. Ignorance perpetuates itself. And there are people, they are still uh, trying to uh, operate their ministries based on their own intellect, their own knowledge, their own self-will, and they do not go into this word that Jackie Fisher just read. And so I've seen some powerful preachers in my life, but they treated their wives like dogs. I've known some powerful preachers who lived in adultery. I, I've known some powerful preachers, women who, 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 had, who hung out with other women. Their sex partner was another woman. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says you shall know them by their truth. I'm not judging. I'm discerning. The Bible says we are to discern. And as you grow in Christ, it is your responsibility to discern. Well, Pastor Cardano, you stepped on my toes. You offended me. So what? So what? Grow up. Grow up. Your toes need to be stepped on. If what I've said already is stepped on your toes, then you need to turn turn some other station on. Get some, get some wimpy preacher who's going to hold your hand and stroke you while he preaches. Tells you how good you are. No, no, I preach the word of God, and I am under contract with God. I'm under contract, meaning I have a responsibility to preach what the Holy Ghost says preach, and woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Men and women and boys and girls are perishing, ladies and gentlemen, because preachers are afraid to preach the word. Now, let's look at it this way, too. Hey, Jackie Fisher, if I preach the word, I'm responsible for living it. If I preach the word, I'm responsible. Hey, Ryan, if I teach this word, I'm responsible for living it. Okay? So, no preacher is above the word of God. We all have a responsibility. But here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the kicker. There are people in the body of Christ who still are still in love with sin. They love smoking their reefer. They love smoking their pack cigars, their blunts. They love uh, 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 drinking that liquor. They love running after someone else's spouse. And, and they're hooked on it, and they don't want to stop. They like what they're doing. 
And ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing you can do. But you know, they keep going on and they, they can justify what they're doing. They can pull out scriptures to justify what they're doing. But the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? And the book of Romans even tells us, Thou art inexcusable, O man. There will be no excuse. That's why I preach the way I do. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the last days. These are the end times. Time is about to wind up. And the gospel must be preached to every generation, to every nation, so that people can hear the word of God and then decide. They have a choice. People have a choice. They can receive that word and do what the word says, or they can reject the word. Let me give you a hint. To reject the word of God means to perish in hell. And then, then there are people in the church, in the body of Christ, they will argue with you, Jackie Fisher. They will say, well, I've been baptized. I was baptized at 13, and I'm 83 years old. I've been baptized for 70 years, and I've been going to church for 75 years. And, 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 and still cussing, still angry with people, still stirring up strife, still backbiting, still uh, living uh, in, in sin and lust, still causing confusion, still uh, 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 pouring out uh, hell upon the preacher and the church family. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not to be played with. The day is going to come when so many people are going to have a wake-up call and will have to stand before the righteous judge and give an account of the lives they live in the flesh. And many who will say, Lord, but I was baptized at 13. Or, Lord, I joined the church when I was 10. Lord, I built churches in Africa. Lord, I gave food, sent food to the people in Haiti. Lord, I put money in the uh, Salvation Army uh, uh, bucket. Lord, I did this. Lord, I, I tithed. Lord, I, I, I sold dinners. I gave blankets to the hungry, and God is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And so that's why we preach the gospel. That's the purpose for the online church. The online church is no better than any other branch of the church. We're here to assist the church, to assist the brick-and-mortar church, to preach that word. We're here to get those people who ordinarily do not attend the brick-and-mortar church. There are people who carefully... There are people who very carefully choose and select not to attend the brick-and-mortar church anymore, but God loves them, and they need salvation and eternal life, and they need to hear from the Lord. And so the online church is one way in which we can reach them. We can reach those who are rebellious. We can reach those who have been bruised and hurt by the church. We can reach those who are sick and shut in and can't get out. And we can reach those who have attitudes. If they really want to be saved, they can be saved. And so we thank God for the online church and the brick and mortar church. We thank God for the body of Christ and the whole thing. Our whole responsibility is honor the Lord God Almighty with all of our substance. And so we come together on Sunday morning for about an hour, and we just praise God. And, and uh, you may say, well, how come Ryan Trogler always prays the prayer? Well, your turn is coming. We're grooming Ryan Trogler. Ryan's God is grooming him for ministry, ladies and gentlemen. Well, how come Jackie Fisher always reads the Scripture? Your turn's coming to read the Scripture. We're grooming Jackie Fisher. God's got, got great minist ministry for her. And so let's let God do what God does, and let's... Bless these people who participate, and we thank God for your participation. And then at the end of each of our messages, we open the, the phone line, and we ask you to share any questions. If you have need, have need of prayer and uh, any, any situation that needs our attention, we do this. Now, I don't spend much time in the chat window. When I'm preaching, I don't look that much in the chat window, but I see some things. And, you know, the one thing that dis 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 disturbs me a lot about the chat room, whether it's this ministry and others, there are people, I mean, the preacher may be preaching his heart out, and there are people talking about what they're going to have for dinner 
uh, what recipes they're having. Ladies, they're not getting anything out of the message. They're not getting a thing. So if you're going to use utilize the chat window, be a blessing to somebody. Be a blessing. And, and, and I pray that you do not dishonor the preacher or the prophet or the teacher by being inattentive and leading others into areas that are not on the subject. Do not dishonor the Holy Spirit by going out there. And so I just, the Lord laid that on my heart yesterday, and uh, we want to be true to God. And so we want to take a look at our subject today. What happens when a person, when a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit? What happens when a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit? The key word there is believer. Non-believers cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. No, non-believers cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Muslims cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hindus cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jehovah's Witnesses cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sikhs cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, atheists cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. Agnostics cannot be filled with with the Holy Spirit. The only people who can be filled with the Holy Spirit are born again believers. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again in order to get the Holy Spirit. Well, church people cannot be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can go to church for 80 years, 90 years, but if you have never received Jesus in your life, then you cannot get the Holy Spirit. But if you will repent of your sins, and ask the Lord Jesus into your life and to save you, then you, can you will receive the Holy Spirit. So as I teach this week and next week, we're going to make a distinction. And uh, I want you to please listen to this. We're going to make a distinction. One, number one, every born-again believer receives the Holy Spirit. Every born-again believer. That's the only way you can get the Holy Spirit. Well, what is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. God. Uh, his official name, according to the Hebrew word, is Elohim. Elohim. That's a plural word for God. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, Elohim. In the beginning, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God created the heavens and the earth. Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit created the heavens and the earth. And God the Holy Spirit has been sent, authorized, sent by Jesus Christ to live in every believer. God so loved the world, ladies and gentlemen, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God, meaning Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, left heaven and lived on earth for 33 years as a man, Jesus Christ. Then he was put to death. He was crucified. He was raised again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. God lived on <coughs> on earth as a man with mankind for 33 years. Then on the day of Pentecost, we found this out last week, 50 days after Jesus died on the cross, the Lord, the Lord Jesus poured out the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, upon the church. He poured the Holy Spirit out. In other words, the Holy Spirit was released from heaven to Come to the earth and to live inside of every believer. Ladies and gentlemen, that is so important. Whenever someone receives Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, they receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will abide with us forever. He will live in us forever. He will live in us until uh, we're called home to be with the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit was poured out by Jesus upon the church. You must be born again to receive the Holy Spirit. But then there's a second level. And this is where, you know, we want to teach it so that there's no confusion. You know, some people say, well, in order to get the Holy Ghost, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do that. No, we're not going there. We're going to teach what the Bible says. 
And the Bible uh, teaches us how to receive the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible takes us to the next level. And the Bible says, uh, we must be filled with the Holy Ghost. We must be filled. So there are two things you need to know. One, every believer receives the Holy Spirit when that person confesses Jesus as Lord. The Holy Spirit, who was poured out on the day of Pentecost, comes into the life of every believer when they confess Jesus as their Lord and receive Jesus Christ as Lord. There are a lot of people sitting up in churches today. They have not confessed Jesus as Lord. They have not opened up their heart to him. They have not received him. You must receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then you can receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus even said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door... I will come in and sup with him and he with me. So Jesus makes it plain. When you receive him, you receive the Holy Spirit. He stands at the door and knocks, but you've got to want him. And now the Bible takes us uh, uh, to the second level in Ephesians chapter 5 and teaches us uh, about being filled with the Holy Spirit. So we want to make the distinction, ladies and gentlemen, about having the Holy Spirit indwelling us and the Holy Spirit indwells every believer. You must be born again to receive the Holy Spirit. And when you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the church, which is the body of Christ. And then the Bible teaches us, as Paul wrote in Ephesians, we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Ephesians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for God. Ladies and gentlemen, these verses describe what a spirit-filled person looks like, what a spirit-filled person does. We're not even going to get into the gifts of the Spirit, such as prophecy, the gift of knowledge, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gifts of healings. We're not even going to go there. These are gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you don't get the gifts until you get the, the giver. The gift giver, that's the Holy Spirit. So we're not even going to go there. Some people say, well, you, if, you have, if you got the Holy Ghost, then you ought to speak with tongues. No, everybody doesn't speak with tongues. We're not going to confuse people with that. Well, if you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to be able to prophesy. No, all do not prophesy. Some uh, do not teach. Some do not uh, lay hands on the sick. All do not do this. The Holy Spirit gives the gifts as he decides. Ladies and gentlemen, stop trying to tell the Holy Spirit how to do his job. Receive the Holy Spirit and receive what he has for you and then walk in obedience to him and glorify God. But if you really want to see what a spirit-filled believer looks like, Ephesians 5, 17 through 21. I'm going to read these verses again. This describes the Holy Spirit-filled person. And then we talk about Husbands obey, uh, loving their wives as Christ loved the church. And wives, uh, submit yourself to your husband. We want to look at uh, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What happens when a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, according to Ephesians 5, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit. Debauchery means that's a waste. You're wasting your life. It's squandering your life. It's dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a spirit-filled believer. When you see someone who's not drunk with wine. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't count the number of Christians who drink wine, drink liquor every day. Got to have that beer. Got to have that wine. Got to have that alcohol. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a sin. Well, I, I beg to differ with you, Pastor Carter. And that's the problem with a lot of people. You, you, you're not begging to differ from me. First of all, you ain't begging. You are different. You're different because you have a contentious spirit. Because in your own intellect, you've got your mind made up. You've got your mind made up that you're going to drink your 40s. You're going to drink your, your, fifths, your fifths. You're going to drink your six-packs. You're going to drink your wine, your wine coolers. And you're still going to go to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, you better wake up. Wake up. The scripture says, be not drunk with wine. And, and, and well, I don't get drunk. Ladies and gentlemen, God knows when you're drunk and when you're not. Why do you think God put that in there? God knows, well, I can handle my liquor. God knows, ladies and gentlemen. God knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. So don't beg to differ with me. Your problem is God. No, first of all, your problem is your own selfish, disobedient, arrogant, proud self. You have made up your mind that you're going to live your life as a Christian the way you design it to be and not the way the Lord has designed it. I know this is tight. Don't don't click off. I'm still looking at the number of people in in uh, in the uh, in on the attendee list. I, I I don't see anybody clicking out now. But if you want to ease out, you go ahead and ease out. But but somewhere along the line, this word is going to come back at you. So you need to get it today. You need to hear this word today and do something about it. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you begin to address one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What do you mean, Pastor Carter? I should walk around the house. I should walk around the mall every time I go. They're singing, uh, uh, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a prayer. No, no, they will lock you up if you do that. But when you address, when you greet a brother and sister, you've got a song. You've got praise. You've got joy. You've got happiness. You're not, you're not beating them up with the news and, and gloom and doom and, and complaining and grumbling. And, 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 and there are so many people who claim to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and all you hear from them is grumbling and complaining. Nothing pleases them. Nothing satisfies them. Personally, I don't like to be around them. I'll minister the word to them, but I don't associate. I don't hang out with them because I'm not going to let anybody, I don't care who you are, you're not going to pull me down to your level. Ladies and gentlemen, I love living in the Spirit. I love praising God. I love singing unto the Lord. And I know how to do battle. God's teaching me how to do battle in spiritual warfare. And I will engage in spiritual warfare with you. And after the battle's over, I'm going back home. I'm going to keep on praising the Lord. And if you choose to (coughs) be a grumbler, a complainer, a dissenter, a troublemaker, a backbiter, you're always stirring up strife. Then, then, uh, 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 then I'm not going to hang out with you. See, when, when, when God delivers you from that kind of lifestyle, and you know that you know that God has delivered you, then you ought to stay in what God has deli- delivered you into. Why go back into the flesh? Why go back being a downbeat, a deadhead, a grumbler, a complainer, an alcoholic, uh, 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 someone uh, getting sloppy drunk? And there are Christians who still get sloppy drunk and call themselves Christian, and they think they're going to heaven. God's not going to let a drunk into heaven, ladies and gentlemen. He's not going to receive a drunk into heaven. Now, a preacher, you, there, some preacher, there's some preacher somewhere, if you're drunk and, and you love liquor, you love alcohol more than you love Jesus, or if you love sex more than you love Jesus, or if you love the same sex more than you love Jesus, or if you love drugs more than you love Jesus, or if you love money more than you love Jesus, there's some preacher somewhere, and, and, and your family will pay him a few dollars to preach your eulogy, and that preacher will say something nice about your, your loved one, or even about you, and that preacher might even picture a, a painting of you being in heaven, sitting on the lap of Jesus, walking down the, the, uh, through the pearly gates, walking the streets of gold. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, preachers need to stop that madness and stop telling those lies. Look, the Bible says a drunk is not going to get into heaven. 
a druggie's not going to get into heaven. Read Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? And so we've got some choices to make. While there is still time to make the choice, ladies and gentlemen, we've got some choices to make. And uh, when a person is truly spirit-filled, you see a change in that person. I mean, the songs they sing, uh, uh, they, they're singing praise songs. They're singing praises. Out of their mouth uh, will flow uh, uh, words of uh, praise unto the Lord. Uh, they're no longer teaching or speaking gloom and doom or talking about their neighbors or, or, or talking about things that are ungodly. Their conversation changes when the Holy Spirit takes over and uh, the person makes melody in their heart unto the Lord and the person encourages you to do something and I know I know I know I know some of you say I don't like to be around them people they're so holy they're holy all the time no people cannot be holy all the time but we can walk in holiness you see when God delivers us from the powers of darkness into the marvelous light then our lives ought to reflect the fact that God has delivered us from the powers of darkness. Our conversation, our way of life ought to reflect that God has set us free. Our conversation ought to magnify the Lord Jesus. And that's what the world needs. The world needs to see you talking about Jesus. They need to see a way out. The Bible says there is a way of escape. And many of you have escaped the, the second death, but are afraid to tell others about it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your witness. That's your testimony. Nobody can tell your testimony, Terry, but you. Nobody can testify for Terry, Terry, but you, Terry. Nobody can tell your testimony but you, Christy. Aaron Carpenter, nobody can tell your testimony but you. So don't depend on anybody to tell your testimony. You tell it, not just in word, but in deed. Tell your testimony. When you go on your job, have a song in your heart. If you're not allowed to sing uh, in, in, on your job, then just, uh, just uh, put a little bounce in your step. If you're not allowed to put a little pep in your step, put a little clapping in your hands. Every now and then, give a hand clap. If, if you're not allowed to hand clap on your job, just shake somebody's hand. If you're not allowed to do that, then just put a note on somebody's desk. Say, have a good day. That's what being spirit-filled is all about. Praise God. So we're talking about what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't beat up on people who are singing praises unto the Lord. Don't try to shut them out. Don't try to ignore them. Don't try to uh, uh, keep them quiet. Uh, uh, see, when people are truly delivered by the Lord, it's impossible to be quiet. Now I want to share something with you in the next few minutes that will help give you uh, enlightenment and where we're coming from, where the Lord is coming from. The Bible says, Do not be drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible also teaches us that we're to submit ourselves one to another in the fear of God. We're to be submissive to one another. That means that does not mean we let people run over us, let people uh, 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 railroad us, let people force us to do things we're not supposed to do. No, you're not to do anything that's contrary to the will of God, and nobody has the right to make you do so. And a lot of a lot of women are afraid when 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 they get this teaching. Our wives submit yourselves unto your husbands. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands. A lot of people get become afraid of that. Oh, I'm not going to be submissive because somewhere along the line, they, they've got this, you know, this liberation theology, especially with the women's movement, that I don't have to be submissive to my husband anymore. And, and as a result, many women, many men are now submissive to their husbands. They got the whole thing flipped around. Okay, by the way, Mother's Day started, Mother's Day started, ladies and gentlemen, in 1908, 1908, by a, name, a lady named Anna Jarvis, 
Anna Jarvis in Philadelphia in 1908. She was a member of the feminist movement, the women's movement, and she wanted to honor motherhood. And so she began Mother's Day in 1908. By 1914, the Mother's Day had received federal recognition, federal recognition. Anna Jarvis wanted to honor motherhood. Yes, she was in the feminist movement, but she wanted to honor motherhood. There are a lot of people who are in the feminist movement, and, 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 and they put men down. They want men to be submissive to them. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not the way God ordained things. The Bible says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That's part of being spirit-filled. If you don't love your wife as Christ loved the church, then you're in error. Wives, if you do not submit yourselves unto your husbands, you're in error. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, my husband's not saved. Even though he may not be saved, he's still the head of the household, and he ought to be honored as the head of the household. But somewhere along the line, we goof that up. We goof that up, and, and I've known many women who left ministries because the pastor would teach the women to be submissive to their husbands. Well, my husband's a drunk. You still honor him as your husband. You married him, didn't you? He's the head of the household. God has not changed, but the man is still the head of the household. Well, Pastor Carter, see, you're old-fashioned. This is a new day. This is 2019. It's a democracy, and, 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 and we meet in agreement. No, God did not say this is 2019 in the Bible. He did not say this was a new day. He said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, and wives, be submissive to your husbands. And then the word says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Uh, so there is an honor your father and your mother. We're to honor our father and our mother. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, uh, the way people dishonor their parents this day, that is sinful. And there are Christians who dishonor their mothers and their fathers. So we need, need to all repent. Get saved. Know that you're saved. When you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit. And then when you get the Holy Spirit, then you have the responsibility. And this is where many Christians leave it. They leave it there. They don't want to go any further. They're, they don't want to go any further. And the majority of Christians that I know do not want to go any further. But I'm going to take you to the next step. The Scripture says be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't just receive the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Why does God want us to be filled with the Holy Ghost? So that God can work in our lives. So that he can change this world uh, in, uh, through our lives. So he can uh, 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 set this world up the way God intended it to be. That man has dominion over all the earth. When we let the Holy Spirit lead us to do the things that God desires, then God will be glorified. But here's the thing. God made us as three-part people. Three-part. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Here's what I mean. Number one, you have a body. Number two, you have a soul. Number three, you have a spirit. Every one of us has a body, a soul, and a spirit. The body is the house of the spirit and the soul. The spirit and the soul live inside of the body. When God created Adam, he formed him out of the dust of the earth and shaped him and blew into him the breath of life and Adam became a living soul. In other words, Adam was no, not just a body shaped out of the dust, but he became a living soul meaning he had a spirit inside of him because God blew the spirit, the breath of God into him, and Adam became a living soul. Now, the soul consists of the following. This is what your soul is. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. I'm going to repeat this. Your soul consists of your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. And so let's go to the top again. Each of us has a body. We have a soul. 
and we have a spirit. The body is where the soul lives. And inside the soul is the spirit. Okay? The body. Inside of our body is our soul. In other words, inside of our body we have a mind, we have a will, we have emotions, and we have an intellect. And inside the soul there is the spirit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you're born again, your spirit, which was corrupt because of Adam's sin, your spirit, the innermost being, innermost part of your being, also known as the inner you or your heart or your heart of hearts, when you're born again, your spirit is renewed by the Holy Spirit. Your spirit, the old nature is destroyed. The old spirit is destroyed when you're born again. And the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you in your spirit. But then, ladies and gentlemen, your spirit is housed inside of your soul. And means, means your spirit is surrounded by your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. Now, if you do not renew your mind in the Word of God and you're born again, but you keep on going out there listening to that same old stupid stuff, your friends and relatives talked for 40 years the same old stupid stuff, none of, none of it's scriptural, then you are smothering your spirit. You are suffocating the Holy Spirit. You are, you are trouncing down you are quenching the Holy Spirit inside of you. Why? Because you give the Holy Spirit absolutely nothing spiritual to build on. If you're not studying the Word of God, if you're not going to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, if you're not hanging out with people who know the Scripture and who love the Lord, you are just defeating yourself and putting yourself back into perdition. That's why the Bible says any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not even fit for the kingdom. And there are people who get saved and they never give themselves an opportunity to grow in the spirit because they don't associate with the church. Many don't attend the church. Many don't even want to come on the online church. They say we're a fake church. You're a false church. Some of them say, yeah, that's not a real church. But ladies and gentlemen, lives are being touched through this so-called fake church or whatever you call it, because we preach the Word of God. Now, listen, your spirit is surrounded by your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. Let's take your will. Your will is your ability to choose those things that please God or those things that please Satan. And in your mind, Satan's always talking in your mind. He's always talking trash. He's got people in your mind. If you choose to hang out with uh, uh, ungodly people, all you're getting, all you're getting dumped into your mind is trash, garbage, satanic stuff. And, 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 and that influences your will. And when it comes to making a choice between right or wrong, right or wrong, uh, your will is listening to what your relatives say. Oh, a little, a little drink won't hurt you, darling. A uh, 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 couple cigars won't hurt you. Uh, uh, you got to have your cocktail before uh, uh, bed. Or uh, uh, having a girlfriend on the side ain't going to hurt you, darling. I mean, that's that stupid stuff that our friends and relatives teach us. But that stuff influences our will. Why? Because we refuse to study the Word of God. I hope I'm laying this out to you and making it plain to you. And then our emotions. Our emotions. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the crazy part in a lot of people, the emotions. I mean, some people, their emotions are uh, hot and cold, hot and cold, uh, 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 up and down, up and down. Some people go through the emotional gamut all the day long. They're on top one minute, they're down in the pits, they're elated, then they're depressed. Ladies and gentlemen, the emotions, if the emotions are not surrendered to the Holy Spirit, then, then, then we're just freaky uh, 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 disturbed, volatile people who are, 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 are susceptible to explosions and, and can hurt people, not only hurt ourselves, but hurt others. And then here's another thing that surrounds our spirit, the intellect. 
I'm talking about the mind, the will, the emotions, and the intellect. The intellect. You know, uh, so-and-so graduated from a certain school, so they got a degree. Now they know everything. Ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to teach anybody who's got a degree, especially teach them something in their own area, because there's something about a degree that makes the person say, I've arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, the degree is oftentimes something on a piece of paper. If you have a degree, if you have a doctoral degree, you can have a Ph.D., but you don't know this Bible. You're just as confused, just as lost, just as ignorant. God wants us to study his word to show ourselves approved unto him. And so, when you look at the human being, we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. It's the spirit that gets saved. The body does not get saved, ladies and gentlemen. This body, that, this pretty body you're living in, that thing you look at every day in the mirror, and you talk to it and say, don't you ever die, you beautiful thing. This body's going to deteriorate. Your teeth are going to fall out. Your hair's going to fall out. You're going to get wrinkled. You're going to get old. This body will not live forever. Your soul, ladies and gentlemen, meaning your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect, they're not saved when you get, give your heart to Jesus. You must get your soul saved, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your intellect. That's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And, and, and uh, there are so many people, I mean, I see these reports, I uh, hear these preachers talking about how many people they got saved on Sunday, how many people got baptized. But I want to ask them, how many of them are now studying the Bible with you? How many of them have committed themselves to study the Bible to get their mind renewed? The Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 12 that we need to renew our mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And renew our intellect. Get rid of that proud spirit. Be teachable. Get a teachable spirit. And, and all these things, when you do this, when you offer your mind and the mind of your spirit, when you offer the will of your spirit, the emotions of your spirit, and the intellect of your spirit or your soul, when you offer them to the Holy Spirit and say, take these and take control. I give you control over me. Then we begin to see a change. I, help, I hope this has helped you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this has helped you. We try to make it plain. Uh, it's just like the person who buys a house. You buy a house. You buy a house and you see this house and this house has uh, a backyard and a front yard. Okay, so you buy the house. There's a house that sits and has a backyard and a front yard. Well, uh, the house is like the, the, the soul. Okay, the front yard and backyard are like the spirit. Okay, uh, and you spend some time, you can walk around your front yard and your backyard, but you live in the house. You sleep in the house. And there are a lot of Christians, just like the person who bought the house. They only give God the backyard and the front yard. And never allow God, the Holy Spirit, to live in the house. God wants to live in our soul. He wants to renew our soul he wants to revive our soul. When we receive Jesus as Lord, we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like, like you give the Holy Spirit the backyard and the front yard. But many people do not give God the house, the place where they live, their secret place. No, God, you can't come in. It's all right. You can hang out in the backyard. You can hang out in the front, out in the front yard. But then Jesus said in Revelation, I think it's 321. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open unto me, I will come in and live with him and he with me. God wants to live in the house. He wants to live in the mind, in the will, in the emotions, and in the intellect. And when we see God, allow God to live in our minds, our will, our emotions, in our intellect, 
ladies and gentlemen, there would be a lot of happy Christians, a happier world, a joyful church. We'll see a greater, greater nation, greater nations. we we'll see people loving one another when they let God into those areas that they continue to shut him out of. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I hope you've enjoyed this message. And go over, uh, play the recording over and over again and get these principles in your heart. And if you have any questions, give me a call or uh, send me an email. And then we'll talk about it. We'll be praying for you. And uh, trust God with all your heart, Father God, I thank you. And if there's anyone, Father, who's listening today and is not saved, help them to give their hearts to you and receive the gift of salvation. Then, Father, help them to press on to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Because, Holy Spirit, we cannot make it without you. We need you, Holy Spirit. So move mightily by your Spirit, Lord. Let your word not return unto you void or empty. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Okay, we're going to close out the uh, recording and stay on. I'd like to answer your questions. Those of you who are in, in countries uh, watching this uh, recording, you can contact me, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or give me a call, uh, 404-201-1101, or visit my webpage, visit my new website, it is totally awesome. www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com